Shalom. It's, it's Rochelle out here in Santa Central California at Shabbat. And I uh, just wanted to read something special to you that really means a lot to me out of the Sahelim, which is the Psalm. This book was given to me by a friend of mine named Eddie uh, in the past, and I am just really blessed to have this. And it's really cool because it uh, has an interlinear, inter interlinear translation, which has the he it's got the Hebrew and then has the English underneath it. So I'm gonna be reading exactly what the Hebrew is and the English translation transliteration. <laughs> I have a hard time trans <laughs> articulating today. <laughs> it's okay because it's a rest rest day actually so but you know I'm doing this video challenge and I wanted to continue to do it on Shabbat and just keep it within what the day is uh, about. And what the Almighty Father of Light is trying to teach us through the Psalms. And uh, so here it is, Psalm 37. And um, there's a little caption at the right underneath where it said, in part of the reading, it says, Do not be lured by the external trappings of prosperity of the wicked, for it is God's blessed one who will inherit the earth. I need to get my glasses. You know, we live our days, we live out our days, and then all of a sudden we try to read something and it's like, eyes are like, they are not failing me, they are getting better and better every day, right? <laughs> I don't know, hang on. I'm sorry. I, I'm not in a rush today. It's Sabbath. I'm like resting and just having peace, you know, and patience. It looks like a grandma sitting in a rocking chair that don't have nothing else to do but take care of grandkids. <laughs> okay, here we go. Psalm 37. Do not compete with the evil doers. Be not envious of the doers of injustice. For like grass, swiftly they will be cut down, and like green vegetation they will wither. Trust in Hashem and do good. Dwell in the land and nourish yourself with, with faithfulness. And delight in Hashem, for He will grant you the desires of your heart. Commit to Hashem your way. Rely on Him and He will act. He will bring forth like a light your righteousness and your justice like high noon. Wait silently for the salvation of Hashem and wait longingly for Him. Do not compete with he who prospers with the man who executes malicious plots. Desist from anger and forsake wrath. Do not compete. It brings out harm. For the evildoers shall be cut off, but those who place hope in Hashem, they shall inherit the earth. Just a little longer, and there will be no wicked one. You will look carefully at his place, and he will not be there. But the humble shall inherit the earth, and delight in abundance and peace. The wicked man plots against the righteous person, and gnashes at him his teeth. The Lord laughs at him, for he has seen that his day approaches. A sword did the wicked draw and bent their bows to bring down the poor and the destitute, to slaughter those of upright ways. Their sword will pierce their own heart, and their, bo and their bows will be broken. Better is the little of the righteous one than the multitude of the wicked one that is great. For the arms of the wicked will be broken, but the one who supports the righteous is Hashem. Hashem knows the days of the perfect, their inheritance forever will be. They will not be shamed in time of calamity, and in days of famine they will be satisfied. For the wicked will perish, and the foes of Hashem are like the glory of fattened sheep, consumed in smoke they are consumed. Borrow does the wicked one, but repays not, while the righteous one is generous and gives. For his blessed one shall inherit the earth, while his accursed one will be cut off. By Hashem are the footsteps of a man established, 
and his ways he shall favor. Should he totter, he will not be cast down, for Hashem supports his hand. A youth I have been, and also I have aged, but I have not seen a righteous man forsaken, nor his children begging for bread. I'm going to stop there. And uh, so this is just an awesome, awesome passage in the Psalms that has promises to us by how we choose to think and how we choose to behave by our decisions that we make. So we are not to compete, right? We're not in competition with anybody and especially not the wicked ones. You know, I've been seeing a lot of uh, stuff out on uh, Facebook out here about haters and, and seeing a lot of arguments going on between people that should be brothers, <clears throat> people in the same industry, people that are um, maybe of different religions, but um, maybe just a little bit different belief in what they believe in their religion and it was arguing back and forth. But, you know, God's ways, when it says Hashem in the scriptures, that's yod heh vav -Heh. that's Yahuwah, that's the, the Father of Light. Hashem in Hebrew means the name. And what is a name? A name is character. A name is what a personality is and what a character is, okay? So when it says to follow the ways of Hashem, to follow the ways of the name, it means to follow the ways of the Righteous One, the Father of Life, the Infinite Intelligence of this universe, the Creator of all things. His way. It's always a balance between the good and evil. You know, there's always going to have, uh, you know, some evil coming against the good. But see, those that persevere and those that that trust in the ways and the characters of the Creator and the enlightened Father of Light that created everything the way it is, those that trust in Him shall inherit the earth. So you inherit the earth even as as we are uh, becoming aware of how the universe works, how the earth works, it's alive, if there's energy within the field of potential. And when I say that, the field of potential is that when we have thoughts and intentions and passions and emotions that are going out into the universe, into uh, those that are all around us, we are creating a substance because faith is a substance. Creating a mass of matter to come back and resonate with you in your life, whatever you're putting out there. So if you're resonating and putting out the frequency of the character of the universe, the creator, you're going to be blessed and you're going to inherit the blessings that come along with that. So um, if, you, if you're not understanding what I'm saying, just go through and read the scriptures one more time on Psalm 37 and ask the Creator to show you and give you divine wisdom and knowledge and awareness and consciousness about what uh, what His ways are and how we're supposed to follow His ways in order to receive the blessings that He's promised us. You know, wait patiently. You know, that means that things don't always come immediately. You know, we invest into our future by what we do, our actions that we uh, that we do, and, and how we serve others that are around us, and that's an investment of going the extra mile and loving those that are around us, loving the Father as we go, and in that comes blessings. It's really hard to explain, but um, you know, groveling negative thoughts crystallize and create a mass of substance coming back at you as, you know, in poverty and destructive behavior. But righteous, pure thoughts, and clean, pure thoughts in your mind goes out into the universe and crystallizes and creates a future for you of blessing that comes along with being righteous and, and serving others. Because the more that you give, there's going to be an increase that comes back, no matter what it is, you're in the positive mode or in the negative mode. Are you going to follow the ways of the evil one and compete with them? Like when you compete with the evil the haters that want to argue with you, when you continue to entertain those negative words, 
coming at you. Instead of closing the door off to those things that are going to allow us to dwell on groveling thoughts and, and crystallizing our life, the things that come along with that, which is debt and poverty and sickness, you know, and, and ugly feelings, you know, it doesn't, you know, when you argue with other people, especially those that you really care about, it's just, you know, it just creates an environment for you of confusion, you know, uh, things that you really don't want to happen start beginning to happen. It's almost like a snowball effect. But it also could be a snowball effect on the other side of the coin when you decide to follow the righteous ways of the Creator and, and study and understand how physically and scientifically this world really works. And in the scriptures prove it that he's telling us right here, don't compete. Don't compete with anybody. If you're going to compete with anybody, compete with yourself. Become a better person. You know, challenge yourself to start thinking more positively. Challenge yourself to not entertain any negative activities that other people in our congregations or families or friends, neighbors, whatever, whoever we come in contact with, our co-workers, that um, we're not going to entertain that frequency. We're not going to entertain those thoughts, that energy, that, you know, whatever, wherever your uh, thoughts go, energy flows. So if you, if you start seeing people being negative and, and you know, just cut it off, you know, prune it off. You know, when you prune a plant, prune the branch of a fruit tree, or you prune the, the branch of a rose bush even, the next season when it begins to grow, it, br it brings out more fruit, more blossoms, it, it, it comes to fruition and increase. When you, when you prune off those things that are not good in your life, whether it's people or things, you know, habits, bad habits, um, within a season, you know, when you begin to grow and you get used to that uncomfortable feeling at first, like, okay, I'm going to first of through this because I know it's not good for me, I'm pruning this off, you know, whatever it is, but, you know, it could be diet, it could be, you know, uh, just bad behaviors, bad habits, things that are not good for our body, not good for our life. Um, when you begin to prune those things off, you're just like a branch. It's gonna, you know, it hurts a little bit at first. You know, the plant looks like it's kind of dead. You know, when you, when you cut all the branches off at the time of pruning, and it, and it gets pruned at the right season also. I mean, there's seasons that we go through pruning, the time harvest, pruning, and then, and then a season of fruit growing out, you know, more fruit from what we had before, and then we realized I did the right thing, I, was, I really did that I cut that thing off, you know. So with that, I just want to say Shabbat Shalom, you know, we have to have a balance in our life, six days you work, and the seventh day you rest. You know, God gives us a day of rest, you don't have to worry about anything you know, on that day, you don't worry about money, you don't worry about <clears throat> your bills, you don't worry about, you know, you got to go in on Monday, you know, just forget about all that stuff, and just live a life live a life of peace and just rest and have, you know, you deserve to recuperate, you deserve to have, be able to sleep in once a week, you know, you know, you do it every day, you need to start changing your schedule a little bit, add a little bit of discipline in your life every day and your future will be way much better than it is today. All right, well, that's all I'm going to say. I hope you have a great Shabbat and I'll talk to you soon. Shalom.